Hello, everyone, and I'd like to officially welcome you to Visualizing People Networks. Everything is connected now. It's time to see the links. Today's session is uh, one of my favorites because um, we often think about organizing our files, our projects, um, but one of the key aspects of the brain um, that is, is often the most fun for new users and existing users is integrating people uh, into their brain. The interesting thing about people is they are perfect for the brain because it, they represent a network. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to another brain. I'm going to go back to um, some of my brains here and start with a more basic brain here. So let me go into um, my brain called your people network. And uh, this is the brain nine that we're using today. You can see it's uh, it's got a very nice tapped interface where you can actually go ahead and navigate to different brains and have si brains open simultaneously. So I've got my one world social networking brain, which the display um, configurations can be different per brain. So I've got my uh, social networking site that has tracking investors here. I'm going to have my default people network brain here, and then I have my sort of one brain for everything, so I can show you how to integrate uh, people in a larger brain available here as well. So I'm going to move through some of these different brains and talk to you a little bit about visualizing people. So um, pieces of information in the brain are what we call thoughts, and a thought can represent any type of digital information, it can represent any type of example. So in this particular brain, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, flip the screen this way. Uh, go old, old school display, as, as Matt and Harlan would probably call this, but I like to see my content on the bottom, is I can have a network of people organized by how they affect my life. So in this particular brain, um, I've got a thought for my team. And uh, what you can do is create thought types for the type of people you have in your organization. And if you want to go ahead and look at your thought types, you can actually go ahead and click on uh, this icon right here, and all your thought types will appear. So if I'm adding a new person to my team, um, I can go ahead and give them a specific type. So some examples of thought types that work well for people for a business setting, manager, director, executive. Um, I like to use the same icon with different colors for, to delineate different status levels for these types of of people, you might have experts, you could have a project leader, a visionary, a CEO, and so forth. And all these people can come together and you can actually go ahead and then connect them to relevant projects. So just to give you an example of that, I'm going to talk uh, about Matt Caton. Um, so he is a director at the Brain Technologies. I have him under my team, but I also have him under friends. You can have a whole network of friends as well. Um, where you can add different people and colleagues um, and have both your social life and your business life in the brain. Now, those brains can be separate or together, and uh, it's fabulous. I'll, I'll move to another brain to show you this, but um, Christmas, birthday, often when I'm online shopping, I'll see something, I'll think, oh, this is great for my sister or, you know, my dad, but, I, I you know, there's no occasion. Um, so I'll just store that link in, the, in their, on, under their name, and come Christmas when I'm frazzled and happy, have to buy a, you know a ton of gifts I see that link and, and it's funny it's like, oh how did you know about this gift or this or that or or little things on notes if I want to make a note on uh, Matt's trip to Los Angeles I can go ahead and make a note there and maybe just uh, talk to him about um, you know bringing an extra suitcase or whatever a hat for all the sun we're getting, uh, that kind of thing. I can do that right here in the notes section. And uh, the notes section is fabulous just for capturing ideas for those of you that are new to the brain. And then for those of you that have used the brain eight and are now on the brain nine, keep in mind there's a lot of new powerful notes features that we're going to go ahead and show you as far as different stylings um, that can be done and, and all kinds of uh, different settings here in the notes. So right now I'm just in the basic style, but if I want to actually change my note style, which I'll show you um, to maybe a classic look with a different font, um, you know, definitely check out these note styles or Del Rey, which is a little bit more modern. Um, you know, you can do that. We have some built-in styles that are pretty fun for the notes. 
Okay, so but back to people, uh, we'll intersperse a few little brain nine tips as we're going through uh, people here. So um, interesting thing about um, what you want to add for people in addition to their uh, notes, you can also add their Twitter account, their Facebook page. I'm just going to go ahead and launch Matt's Facebook page in a separate window there. And uh, sorry, Matt, I hope I'm not uh, uh, picking on you too much here and, and showing a page I shouldn't show. But uh, so we've got a, a all page public up. information. Happy to share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, so we've got his 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 wonderful uh, VW there. I can look at that. And uh, one of the things I launched is a separate page that's very unique also about the Brain 9 that's different. Again, if you're coming from Brain 8 to Brain 9, because we literally just put our um, Brain 9 Beta as the official release. Uh, we did a newsletter announcement about this yesterday on the homepage, or well, on our d download homepage, I should say, as the official release because we've got such positive feedback. So I want to thank all you beta users for um, helping us test the product. I, we're not done by any means. We still have a lot of bells and whistles and features, um, but you can see here that um, there's this is a new addition. If I were to have launched this in my other brain, I'd, I'd have to open a separate window. And of course, you can still do that. As you saw, I can open the page in a separate window, or I can have it just displayed below, which is which is very nice as well. And of course, Matt's got a, a Twitter account here, which um, again, same same thing here. I like to follow Matt. He'll also often have tips and tricks on that as well. And uh, you know, you can go ahead and, and look at things and see. There's and of course when people are tweeting stuff out, um, you know, I can go ahead and I'm going to go uh, get this article that Matt tweeted out about ways to stay motivated and stick to goals. That is very interesting. That is also very Matt. Uh, so I'm going to put this under um, what he's doing. So I don't want to put everything that Matt's tweeting out. That would that would be that wouldn't make sense to me. But when you have a person in your brain, you start to put things in your brain that are meaningful to you. Um, to reflect your your thinking, your relationship with this person, also very cool ideas. Um, for instance, I've got a, in my own brain a, a section on Jerry Mikulski. He's got all kinds of things going. Um, we're going to go to Jerry's brain in a second, but um, so here I'm simply going to drag and drop this. Um, so this is a separate wedge page here, and again, you saw how easy that was. It's literally dragging from the browser address window and dropping into the brain. And we have 75 ways for you're motivated to stick to your goals. And now um, what you can see here is the web page is appearing below. I can go ahead and actually move the, the brain around. So if I want to have the web page on the top or actually have I can do that as well. Um, that's pretty interesting, but I, I'm going to keep this on the top. And I can also move it to the side, which is actually our new default display. Um, and this is kind of interesting. So you can see this page with the content. And then I've got my thoughts here as well. So let me just go to this. And again, this is through the, the little arrows here um, where you can play with your display. So I'm going to click on Matt again. I don't really have anything for Matt right now, but I'm going to go to my web design project. And this is my document here as well. So um, now what I want to show you is, of course, um, integrating people to projects. And there's different ways you can do that. Um, I personally, if they are just a person associated with the project, I like to have my people as jump thoughts. And uh, just to kind of step back a bit, there are um, several key relationships for thoughts in your brain. We have uh, parent thoughts and then children and jumps and siblings, thoughts that share the same parent. So if I click back up to my people network here, and I'll just go ahead and make this a little bigger here so you can see, um, I've got uh, five child thoughts below this. Um, so I can come in and I can go to family, and I can look at, I, you know, put stuff in on kids, my parents, my spouse, my sister. Uh, again, this is that really fun section that I'm talking about. You can add um, copy and paste pictures as well, which is really nice. Um, and then, of course, partners. This is an area where, um, just as an example here, I have um, one of a, a mind mapping expert from Poland, actually, um, that, we, that uses the brain and, and tweets out a lot of interesting stuff. 
So I have him under partners as well as mind mapping, which is part of my UI design, part of a concept area um, that we're thinking about for our web design project. So, um, and if I want to actually go ahead and change this and move things around, um, you know, I can kind of do that. So let's go into my mind mapping section. You can see I've got Dan Rasmus. And I've got an image there and I can just go ahead and click on Dan and, and launch his, his web page if I want to go ahead and do that. And now in this case, what I'm doing is I'm launching a LinkedIn page. So I want to just talk a little bit about, there's all these different social networking sites, of course. You've got LinkedIn, you've got Facebook, there's Twitter. And uh, so all these information sources can be aggregated really nicely and effectively in the brain. Um, so in this case, um, you know, I can go ahead and message Dan, or I can look at what's going on in, in his profile and or mutual connections that we have. And uh, a lot of people like to, to map LinkedIn into the brain because um, LinkedIn, of course, has all kinds of very uh, interesting uh, networks. And of course, if I want to go ahead and copy uh, and paste the pictures, I can do that. Um, but I'll save Matt. Matt, Matt Matt's going to get into a little bit more customization, copy and paste imaging. So I'll just talk, uh, talk to you about some basic examples and have Matt drill in a little bit more on the details. Um, same thing with, uh, with Chuck Frey here. I've got Chuck Frey, who's a mind mapper. And again, I've got his picture attached to the thought. And you can see it's appearing in the... And because I've linked his Twitter account, I've got this appearing as a note as well. And then I've also got ha hashtag in there as well, the Twitter hashtag of mind map. So that if I just want to kind of look at everything that's going on in the mind mapping community, um, I can go ahead and do this. And then again, if I want to add something, um, there is an interesting um, article from uh, Bigger Plate Business on a, on a uh my, a mind map of emo, an emotional intelligence. So that's that's kind of interesting to me. So if I want to go ahead and, and grab that or integrate that into my brain, I can go ahead and do that or even just take a screen grab of that as well. So if I right click on the thought here, um, I can go ahead or just click on the thought and get go to properties. I can change different things. So for instance, let's just go back to mind mapping. And uh, if I click on this button here, I can go ahead and capture an image from my desktop, or I can select an icon that already exists. So if I want to go ahead and select that icon, I can go ahead, and we have all built-in icons, all kinds of things. So maybe I'll go into uh, symbols here, or actually, I think science. I'll just get a, a picture of a, of a brain here and add that brain onto. Well, I thought we had a, a brain somewhere in here. Well, let me just go ahead and uh, add maybe a cloud for cloud-based mind mapping. So let's use this, well, use this image a little more. So here I've got my icon here for mind mapping. So you can add pictures or um, icons to people as well. So this is just one example of uh, a network. Now, if I want to hire some new people for my web design team, I'm just going to go ahead and create new hires for web project. Create a new thought here. Now I'm just coming into the brain. I'm going to hit enter, and I've got my new hires. So I might have a couple people that I want to hire. I'm going to hire uh, or work with Sally Jones, Brad Brown, and Jill Davey. Okay, so I've got all these people in my brain. Uh, now a couple things here. I can actually type them all, if they're all at the same level, if I want to have them all typed in as manager, I can just come ahead and, and select manager, coworker, or expert, because now I'm doing a batch entry. So in this case, they're all managers. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tag and enter. And I've got these people in my brain, but you can see they're also tagged as manager. Now, the other thing that I want to have is I'm going to have an art director, Hank Johnson. And Hank is coming in at a director level. So I'm going to tag Hank, enter. And so now you can see what I'm doing is I'm creating different thought types for people in this particular brain. And uh, now what I can do is I actually want to link Hank, who is the art director, to UI design. So now when we're talking UI design, um, I've got Hank. And Dan, doesn't he's an expert of UI design 
in the um, sense, in the general sense, but not in the sense for this project. So he needs to go back here. And Hank is a attached to my UI design thought under my web project. Um, and of course, you can attach documents and it's pre document. And you can see what that looks like as well and launch your document there. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I just want to go back to people to talk a little bit more about how to connect people and, and the relationship status. So what we have here is the UI design thought. And I've got Hank appearing as a jump. Now, if he totally owns this project, I can put him above as a parent. Um, and if he was just one person of many, I can also add him, like you may be working with Dan, as a child. So what I'm doing is I'm literally just dragging the thought around the active thought to change that immediate relationship, okay? Now you can also link and unlink, or you can get a little bit more into mass editing. But so in this case, I'm gonna put Hank there. And you can see I have my past thought list. Uh, Jill is also very good at UI design, so I'm gonna come here and make a connection to Jill. So now when I'm looking at my web design project, and I'm thinking, or sorry, my web design project, I'm thinking specifically about user interface design, UI design, I've got Jill and Hank on the go. Now the other thing that's really cool is um, I like to set thought types up for people on their talents. Um, so if we wanna go back to this new hire area, um, we can actually create tags for these people. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Brad, for instance. And if I want to go ahead and tag Brad that he is actually a HTML programmer, I'll go ahead and add him in my brain, or I can see who else is an HTML programmer. So let me just go back to Brad and right-click on him. And let's go ahead and set a tag for Brad as HTML programmer. So now I've got that tag there, and you can see that you've got the little icon uh, little uh, tag icon there as well, so I can see that he's tagged. That's a, a setting that you can turn on or off, but um, let me go ahead and tag Brad and Sally, actually. Let's go ahead and set a tag for HTML programmer. Now, of course, we're just building this brain and getting started, but let's say I have another project. Um, let me just add a new project here for uh, database migration. So I'm doing a new database migration project. I'm going to go ahead here and add an icon. Go into technology. And this will work for database. So we got our database migration uh, project. I'm going to go ahead and take notes of all the fun stuff this entails. I can't wait. La la la, oops, and of course I can adjust, do spell check or whatever, but I'll just go ahead and just do this for now. Um, but in this case, I wanna kind of go ahead and look at people, um, people who might be relevant for this database project. And we're building a front end, so I actually need some HTML developers. So if I go ahead and click on HTML programmer, that tag, now I can see everyone in my brain that's tagged with this particular skill set. Um, and this becomes more relevant for larger brains as well. Or if I wanna see who is a sales expert, for instance, which I actually don't have any tags for that, or a writer, um, you know, all those people that were tagged with these different um, skills would appear in my brain. So in this case, I see Sally might just be the person. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a connection are. I'm just going to start typing in the first couple letters of that thought because it's not, I can't see it, but all I have to do if I want to link to a distant thought is just start typing in the, the uh, uh, drag a link out and start typing in the box. I'm going to link it. I'm going to link her under database migration. And I go, I've gone ahead, double clicked on that thought. And now she's a new hire for web project, but she is specifically working on database migration. And in this case, I might just kind of keep all my developers as um, child thoughts here. So this is just kind of a really small basic brain on um, organizing people. Uh, I wanted to show you how to add Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, tag and, and type those. Um, a couple more examples before I pass presenter over to Matt with just some other different 
um, ideas for you. A lot of people like to use the brain to visualize people within the investment community in their business land landscape. In fact, we have Jerry Mikulski, who has a brain, a tech taxonomy that lists all kinds of cool people in the investment world. Um, we can go ahead and look at Jerry's brain. But before I do this, this particular brain is called One World Social Networking Site. And this brain is for a company who's actually uh, setting up a social networking site to connect philanthropists and um, donors together. Um, so that's the, hence the world, One World. This is a fictitious company um, based on actually some, some real examples that we're doing with some tech startups. So um, here you can see I've customized the color background and uh, the links, um, obviously all something you can do that we can discuss a little bit more in Q&A. So what I'm gonna do is actually click on the venture capital section of this brain. Now in this case, you can see I've got different thought types. I'm actually just gonna click on my thought type area to show you that I've got an investor thought type and that appears there. And so if I wanna click on any particular investment firm like the Mayfield Fund, I can see what company that they've invested in, which is social networking site is another thought type, which is slide.com. So I click on slide.com. In this case, what I'm doing is I've actually organized every investor that has invested in this company as a parent. Now that's a little bit of a different way of putting the relationship. In the other brain, I had more of my web development appearing below as a children. So this is giving you an idea of different knowledge models, as we like to call it, different ways of using the relationships to visualize real-world relationships, people networks. And um, by the way, the reason the brain is so fantastic at people networks is because we are a network-oriented interface. And what that means is that the brain can have many different connections um, without duplication. So in this case, if I were just to be storing information on slide.com, let's say on my file folder system, I'd have to decide, do I put it under photo sharing sites and just lock it into that folder? Do I put it under MySpace you know, as a derivative company or do I put it under which of these tech firms that invested? But with the brain, I can see all these things without duplication. So in this case, I can see um, in addition to um, uh, the Mayfield Fund, they've had the Founders Fund, they've had different other investors come in and contribute to different rounds of this company. Now, um, this can get pretty complex. This is great. So if you're securing funding, if you are targeting other companies um, to see, you know, chain of command for approval for a sale, you can map that out too. Um, so I'm just going to click on the Founders Fund, for instance. And um, so you can see the web page appear below. And in this case, if I actually want to go ahead and see more of the web page, uh, you can really adjust things in the brain nicely. And I can go ahead and actually um, take the uh, adjust size of text in Plex icon and just use the slider to make my brain bigger or smaller. So this is just another example here of how you can really easily customize things so well um, you know, I have users right, oh, my brain's so big, it's taking up so much space, or this kind of thing. Well, that doesn't have to be. Maybe your brain isn't 100% your vocal, uh, focal point. Maybe it's your web pages that you've got connected. So in this case, I can see everything that's going on with Founders Fund here, what they're talking about. But I've, I've now made my brain like three quarters of the screen. And as well, we can go back to, um, you know, the, the default view where you've got the page to the uh, right and so you can see i've got this cute little uh but powerful brain of of investment happening here um with the the page that i'm reviewing so i can go ahead and just browse this i, I can continue to look at their website right here in the context of my brain and look at the the the, the investors uh, we've got peter teal we've got ken hallery and all these different people uh lauren gross and you know click on each of these people uh, in the brain. And the other thing that's interesting is if I look at my research here, I've actually gone ahead and added different um, pictures to these people. Um, uh, Peter Thiel, for instance, but I don't actually have Lauren Gross uh, into the brain. I need in under Founders Fund. I need to update that. So in this case, I'm just going to drag and drop and get Lauren into my brain. And of course, I can go ahead and I can right click as well to go ahead and capture her image. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and uh, grab her. 
oh, it's actually taking me off the desktop. Let me escape off that. In this case, I can actually even copy and paste her image. Um, but there is a different, or open this in another page, um, you know, which might be the easier way to add the image and add her to this network of people. And this is under venture capital. So we're just going to move to venture capital where I can see um, how this all fits together. So this is just another example of a knowledge model and how you can use the brain to really see things that wouldn't otherwise be possible. And finally, my final example, before we get into more of the, the nitty gritty, is I want to take you to Jerry's brain um, because Jerry has a brain of over half a million links and, and thoughts. It's, it's, it's the largest brain on record, but um, created by a single individual. But he actually has a great section on investors as well. So we can go ahead and do a search for investors um, or just things you want to invest into. Um, so let me just go ahead and, and move to a different area here, different companies. And uh, you can see Jerry's kind of doing the same thing. This is a public brain where he's got a section on asset management in financial services. But we've got all kinds of people connected to Jerry's brain. And in fact, we can actually do a search for certain people. Um, like we could do, uh, let's just see, for instance, if he has thought on, uh, and I'm totally winging this, uh, Bill Gross. I don't know, he might, but actually, oh yeah, he's, Bill Gross appears quite a bit in this brain. As, and Bill founded a uh, Idea Lab company. Let's show you which is uh, an incubator business for tech startups. So here again, and this is just a great brain as well for seeing business development connections, you can see this particular investment uh, company um, has founded a lot of different companies from paymybills.com all the way to um, you know, all kinds of things like the CASA. So um, this particular um, idea lab has, as I can go ahead and go to the different companies, or I can go back to the incubator, the type of investment company, and look at what they're doing. So he's got all different investors here. It's a great resource for any of you tech startups um, looking for investment. But I use it, um, um, this can apply to anything. We have a medical sciences companies that are connecting uh, public academia grants with private investment and, um, and new developments coming together so you can connect your industry, your people, your companies, and you can see how nice this works out and, uh, and how you can really get a picture on different people. And I'm just going to go to Gates because I thought he had something really cool in here that I saw on Bill and Melinda Gates. And you can see he's got a lot in there about the Gates. Let's just go ahead and click on Melinda Gates um, and see what's going on here. And she is According to Jerry's Brain and Wall Street Journal, one of the 50 women to watch. And we've got, the, and you can see the way we've connected uh, Melinda Gates here. She's an, a Microsoft alumni. So there's a section here on Microsoft alumni. And these are just all people that Jerry's probably had dealings with or worked with. And you can notice he's using Wikipedia links as well as LinkedIn links. And then, you know, sometimes when you're in a larger brain like this and you feel, oh man, I, I got lost. There's so many people I can't even figure out where's Melinda, remember your past thought list. Don't forget about your, your, your best friend in the large brain, that and the pins up here um, that you can set. I'm going to go ahead and click on Melinda Gates, and just so you can see what she's connected to, which, of course, she's a parent of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, very fabulous foundation that's doing all kinds of things. And when I click on that, that takes me into a whole other area with stuff they're doing. Um, as well as the parents that it's under. This is under a section called social entrepreneurs. Um, and in fact, I would refer um, One World Social uh, Networking to this area because all these social entrepreneurs might make for great investors in this new concept here. So here I'm kind of looking and thinking and I can kind of build brains and, and cross pollinate my ideas for business development. And you can see how it all comes together quite nicely in the brain. So this is some ideas on different network examples. Uh, Matt, I just want to take a, the pulse of everyone in, in Q&A, and uh, I think this is probably a good time to transition uh, to your examples on link types and, 
and actually um, attaching images and, and, and typing and so forth. But before I do, is there any specific questions on any my, of my examples that I covered? No, I think we're great. Uh, a lot of questions about uh, going from eight to nine, so I've answered oh, those. Okay. Check out the uh, yes. uh, check out the QA if you're interested in seeing okay. about upgrading or merging from eight to nine. But uh, I think we're in great shape, and I'm happy to share with you some further examples of how I define relationships in the brain. Okay, great. And by the way, this is Brain Eight here. Here's my friends and family in the Brain <laughs> Eight. So I've got you know. Here's the thing, especially for you. Um, users like some of you like I've been using the brain obviously for over a decade as well I still have brain 8 I'm importing my brains into brain 9 brain 9 is solid there's no issues there but I mean I've got a lot of brains so some of my stuff you know JT apparel is still in the brain and I've got the brain 8 here so keep in mind too um, for those of you if you are a business user and maybe you can't do a lot of web uh, software updates um, for whatever reason, the BrainAid is still a fabulous tool. Um, and, and to be honest, everything that I've shown, other than the tabbed interface and the content appearing below in the frame um, and the note styles, <laughs> I guess there were a few things, is in the BrainAid. So there's a lot of, you know, the BrainAid is still fabulous, and here it is. And in fact, if I want to go and show you, um, like, the One World social networking site, the tech startup brain, here is this brain. I've got this brain in the brain eight, right? So you can see brain eight and, and brain nine here um, as well. So, um, and, and by the way, in Q and A, and if there's like a, a bunch of you, I guess we could almost have a poll. We're happy to present either technology. Um, and in fact, usually uh, we do present in the brain eight. Uh, this is my first webinar in brain nine. It's kind of exciting because we we did do the switch. Um, I guess last week or something like that to, to sort of make the Brain 9 our official release. But with that, all these these questions and, and new features and uh, and new ideas for people that okay, I'm going to pass presenter over to Matt Caton since you saw him in Facebook and Twitter in my brain and now you can see his his brains and and Matt, go ahead and use your webcam if you can too. I'm I'm I apologize, something's going on with my webcam. I couldn't get that to work. I might troubleshoot that and bring it up for Q&A if possible. Absolutely. So I'm going to start today by sharing with you, I've got actually two different brains that, uh, that I want to share with you. And I think Shelly had some great examples of how you can connect people to uh, projects or specific topics uh, that they're, that person is focused on within your business or, or within your life. And I'm going to take that one step further and actually start defining the relationship that these people have with the specific project. So not only can you decide whether or not you want to make them a parent thought, child thought, a jump thought to sort of display their, their hierarchy if they own the project or if they're working for the project, you can further define relationships within the brain and not just between people but between all different types of topics with something that we call link types. And so we're going to talk a little bit about link labels and link types before we move on to some other features. So the first brain that I'm going to share with you now is uh, this brain called Scout Laboratories. And let me take you on a quick tour of this brain just to so you, so you get the lay of the land. Obviously with Scout Laboratories, um, it is a pharmaceutical uh, company. And as you can see, I've got a department for a thought rather for all the different medications that we're working on. And I can click on any of those to learn more about the labels. Uh, for that project or the people that are working on that project. And notice, let me just click on one of them. I'll select Lifarex. So this is, as you can see when I mouse over, one of the medications that my organization is working on. And notice the links, some of them having labels. So I've got a non-FDA approved label going up to atrial fibrillation and an FDA approved label going up to coronary artery disease. Same product but it's either non-FDA or FDA approved for different uh, medical conditions. So I'm actually defining the, the, uh, the relationship or the status in this case. And I really, really like doing that with people as well, why people are connected together, why people are connected to projects. So let's obviously focus on that today. Notice I've got my people for this project linked over on the left as a jump thought. So here's Damien, Laura, and Travis, all associated with this particular product that my organization makes. 
And Damien, as you can see, he is the label expert for Liferex. So automatically I know when I go to this product, if I don't know much about it, maybe I've been given a copy of this brain or if I share this brain with someone else, I don't have to walk them through it step by step and tell them why these people are linked to the project. One person wrote the label, one person might be the lead sales rep, another person might be taking that medication. So they're actually a good resource for us. How do you feel? When do you take it? How happy are you? Are you satisfied are you? And um, so we've got some firsthand uh, information about this product and how it has helped um, uh, this particular person or this particular client. In this case, someone that actually works in our organization. So let's go ahead and apply those labels then to these thoughts. Now, when I click on a link between two thoughts, notice that that link becomes highlighted. My notes went away because I can add notes to a specific thought, or excuse me, to a specific link. So if I don't click on the link, I'll click away again. I'm back to my current active thought, Life of Rex, and here are my notes all about this particular product, sort of my crib sheet for learning about this product. But I can click on the link between two thoughts, once again. If I highlight the link between Travis and Life of Rex, and over on the right, I can say one, the sales rep, of the year for 2016, knows the product, et cetera, et cetera. So talk about how Travis is a really great salesperson for LifeRx 2.0. All that information can go on the notes. So it's not necessarily just about Travis, not just about LifeRx, it's about the relationship between the two. Travis really knows how to sell this particular project or product. He might be linked to other products in the past that he, where he's just learning. Maybe if he's just learning LifeRx, I type in my notes, just getting on board. Oh, if I can spell today, just getting on board, still learning the ropes, still has to understand blah, blah, blah. So some notes on Travis's relationship with LifeRx. And I want a quick description between those two thoughts. So that when I'm navigating through my brain, I can just see the label expert, the person that knows all about the labels for this product. They're not in sales, they just know all the do's and don'ts of, of taking uh, this particular pharmaceutical product. Travis is the salesperson. So I'm gonna right click on that link between Travis and LifeRx and select properties. I can also click twice and I'll do that really quickly. Just so you can see there's different ways to get to the link properties display window. So now that I've clicked twice, once again, that link is still highlighted and I can assign a thought type. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Or I can just do a one-off if I just want a one-time label. So Travis is the sales rep and I want all of my sales rep links to be purple. I can change the color so it really stands out. And when I click away, once again, I've better defined the relationship between a person and a product and i can do that people to people you'll see a great example of that in just a bit but in this case i'm focusing on the people and the individual products let's go back and just change this i want to start defining all my different sales reps uh, for my different products so i'm going to open this once again let's go back to the defaults really quickly just clear the slate back to the default link color and let's set up a link type the link type is great because I can then reassign this link to other thoughts that share the same relationship elsewhere in my brain and run a report of them. So I can find all my sales rep links or all of my uh, label expert links. So first off, I'm looking down below to see if this label actually exists, this link uh, type label. It does not, so I'm gonna create a new link type and just call it sales rep. And there it is, Travis is a sales rep for LifeRx. Now I can go to another product, I'm gonna click on Swift, and I'm gonna say Mike is the sales rep for Swift. So I click and assign my now thought type. As you can see, it applies down, or appears down in that list of, of link types. And if I wanna modify, remember I liked that purple link, so I'll click on the pencil to modify. All sales rep links will have a purple display. And if we go back to LifeRx, 
I believe it's there as a sibling thought. There it is. You can see that one updated as well. So it's a universal change throughout my brain. When I apply sales rep, it's automatically going to have the purple color showing up. It's going to display a sales rep and define that relationship in my brain. And as I mentioned earlier, I can run a report. So I'm going to open up the reports uh, for this particular brain. Now, when I open up reports, you can see I got there by the button, the sort of quick launch button for reports up above. You can also go to view and click on uh, reports to open up your reports. And this is where I can run a report against my brain. Show me all Word documents uh, modified in the past week. Uh, show me all thoughts of a certain type. We'll talk about thought types in a minute. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, all right, show me all thoughts that have the link type of sales rep. So you can see I've got 156 thoughts in this particular brain, but really quickly, I've got my sales manager walks into the room and says, all right, show me who's repping all the different uh, products that we have. So I want to find all my links that are connected between a person and a product as sales rep. So Travis is the sales rep for LifeRx, therefore that shows up right here in my brain. And I can get to any one of those thoughts from that report very, very quickly. So that's one of the other advantages of creating link types is that you can run these reports against that data and find all thoughts that are linked with that particular type of link. So let's jump back over to LifeRx. We've got one more person, Laura, to define. I want to define Laura's rela relationship with LifeRx. And this is something that I really find intriguing. I don't use these link types very often within my brain, but when I do, it's a very, very valuable tool. And there's very unique and specific situations where I want to know about a relationship between two thoughts or between a person and a thought from one direction, but not the other. So when I'm on the life or rec thought, I want to know everything there is to know in my organization about life or recs. I've got the next generation of the product, LifeRx 3.0, our disclosure forms, label details, clinical trial results, all the information about this product is there. And all the people that know anything about LifeRx are linked as a jump thought. Laura actually takes LifeRx. She uh, was prescribed LifeRx by her doctor. She takes it. So once again, a really valuable internal resource. We can talk to her about how often, what her medication is, what her dosage is, how long she thinks she'll be taking it, why she started taking it, et cetera. A great resource. We can use that information to then talk with our customers, clients, distributors, et cetera. So I'm going to click on the link between the two thoughts and open up the thought or the link property display. And Laura takes LifeRx 2.0. And now I'm adding one additional element. I'm going to set up a directional link. Now, if I just want an arrow to appear, this button is like a toggle switch. So I can put an arrow one direction or the other or have no direction on that particular link. One step further, I'm going to say this is a one-way link. And I want to make sure up in the brain it's pointing to the right. Um, depending on which link you're clicking on and where the link is on the screen, um, just know that this is a toggle button, so you can flip it back and forth, left to right. It won't always line up directly with the link because I might be clicking on something on the right side of the screen, uh, in which case it would line up in the same direction. So regardless, I'm going to say Laura uh, is uh, taking LifeRx. I want a one-way link between LifeRx and Laura. And the reason why I want that is because when I can see LifeRx, so Laura Carr takes LifeRx, that link appears there anytime I come and visit this LifeRx thought because that's helpful information for me to know. Laura happens to work in our legal department. When I am doing some research for legal department, maybe I need to contact someone to look up some documents to send on to a distributor, whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe I'm talking to Wendy about her projects or Laura. Notice when I'm on the Laura Carr thought, I don't need to know that Laura Carr takes LifeRx. So that's not important to me right now. What's important to me is she works in the legal department. Um, maybe I'm in charge of overseeing her tasks or sharing some meeting notes with her or checking in on her with her uh, research for funding for other projects we have coming up. Whatever the case may be, I don't need to know that she has actually been prescribed LifeRx. I only need to know that from the LifeRx thought. So once again, I set up that one-way link when I come down to the Laura thought, I don't see in any way that she's connected to LifeRx. However, 
If I go up to Scout Laboratories, medical conditions, atrial fibrillation, uh, non-FDA approved is Liferex. Again, regardless of how I navigate to that thought, if I come in from Liferex, I see the link. If I come in from legal department, Laura Carr, I don't. That's a one-way link. And those can become just incredibly valuable for uh, uh, setting up, especially in business environments. Sometimes I like to know that a particular person plays golf, but I don't need them linked up to all the different golf courses that, that I go to or uh, my golf thought on the brain. But when I'm talking with that client or that executive, it's good for me to know that they uh, share an interest in golf just like I do, and we can talk about maybe doing business on the links or whatever the case may be. So very unique scenarios when I use that, but when it comes in handy, it's just a fabulous, fabulous feature to use in the brain. Let's talk really quickly about thought types and tags as well before I share with you a really, really spectacular uh, brain that has a lot of link types, thoughts, and tags, and is all people. So really quickly, let me show you when I mouse over a thought, you can see that, again, this thought is a medication, and you can see my tags for Shelley's review, and it is a low priority item. These are tags that appear on uh, individual thoughts. I can apply multiple tags to a thought, and I can apply individual thought types. A thought type is just a definition or a classification of a thought. This is a medication. Um, LifeRx3 is something that we're just starting to research. What is LifeRx3? It is a medication. So I can actually, once again, just like I can on a thought uh, or on a link, I can click on the thought to open up the label and change the thought type. So click on type and look down, I've got, this is a medication so I can apply that. I set these up on people as well. Um, so Travis is a salesperson, Damien is into research, and Laura is legal department. So once again, I can click on the people as well, maybe not just the links, but the people, and set up a thought type. So I'll create a new thought type. They're in sales. So it's that easy to set up a thought type. And again, the advantages are I'll see that appear as I mouse over the thought, and I can very easily go to all of my medication thoughts. There's all the different medications my company is researching, and I can go to my sales team. So far, I've just created that one thought type. There's Travis uh, in the sales team. As you can see, sales team, he's got a lot of different other links as well. Other people, maybe not necessarily in the sales team, might be linked to sales. Maybe they're uh, in sales for another organization, and I communicate or collaborate with them from time to time. So they're not in my sales team, but they're still a sales rep for another organization, and we chat from time to time to collaborate. So I can apply this to many different people in different areas of my brain. And again, run reports on those and filter my reports. Uh, so once again, I can say, all right, show me all thought types uh, that are sales people. And there, again, only one, and I can get right to that thought very, very easily. And the same with tags. The great thing about tags is that you can apply multiple tags to a thought. I always think of a tag as an attribute. Uh, Travis, yes, he may be in sales. He's the lead sales rep for LifeRx 2.0. Uh, but also, I'll go down to tags. Uh, Travis knows HTML. Great resource in case we want to put together a little sort of spreadsheet or, or one on, online page promoting uh, uh, this particular product, maybe Travis could help us out with that. So I'm going to tag him as knowing uh, HTML. And notice I like to type in, especially in, in the brains that I create for business, uh, the different qualities that people have. If they know another language or know how to program JSON or HTML or whatever the case may be. So I'll create a new tag. Let's see, say that Travis uh, speaks Portuguese. And so I always just add a star. A star for me is like this is this person's attribute. And just type in Portuguese. And maybe we've got a new client that we're finessing or a distributor. Uh, they are in Portugal. And so we're getting a lot of emails and exchanging information. And I really, really need some help uh, doing some translations, making sure I'm wording everything properly. Um, once again, in my brain, I can see those different tags when I mouse over that thought, or I can run a report or even click on the button in the brain, show me all employees that I know that speak Portuguese, and they'll all be listed down below. And 
Go to my tags again, show me all high priority items. Another sort of tag um, type that I like to create. So one is researching a competitor medication, and one here again is a person. It's a high priority item. Uh, Edward is uh, speaking with the makers of Zoran. The details of, on what I need to know are over there in the notes. Uh, but once again, that's a high priority item in this case, assigned to a person. So I can uh, get to that thought, check that off my list. And when Edward is no longer a high priority item, I've talked with Edward about uh, the Zoran and I keep some further notes. I can just click on Edward and remove him out of that category. He's no longer tagged as high priority because that task has taken place. So now one last component to share with you before we move into QA is that we have a lot of great examples of people networking in one brain, the Tudor Dynasty brain. Uh, so this is a brain that uh, some of us at the brain collaboratively created uh, a few years back. And it's been a lot of fun to really finesse and develop this brain. It is genealogy all in one brain. Now I'm gonna minimize the notes over on the right. So uh, everything that we've clicked on today, Shelly, whether she's linking web pages or content, um, all of the content appears over on the right or if you move it on to the bottom. I can also completely minimize that. Let's do that now. You can see really quickly, anytime I click on a thought, it's giving me just a nice little synopsis about that historical person. So that's all fantastic and helpful information. Notice a lot of these actually link up to other thought names so I can actually click and launch that thought if I want and go directly to that location when there's other thoughts that contain that data. Let me go ahead and minimize that for now. We can talk about that in detail in just a bit. But this is a really, really fantastic brain. It's a great example if you are interested in genealogy. We do have a lot of people that uh, join us for this call today specifically because they're researching their genealogy. Um, and this is just sort of the, the diamond example of, of genealogy, which is of course uh, English nobility, starting with the House of Tudors. Let me take you on a really quick tour. This is a lot of fun. Um, Harry, uh, Henry the Seventh is known as sort of the, the father of the House of Tudor. So of course he's sort of our starting thought. Uh, his father, and we branch off in a different direction going up to Richard uh, the Third and so forth on up above. But House of Tudor started with Henry. And let's take a look down below. Notice that all the links are typed. So a person is either connected because they're an issue, and issue simply means uh, that's the son or daughter of this person. So he had a son, Henry VIII, which we'll get to in just a second, Mary Tudor, Margaret, who we're gonna take a look at, and um, Arthur as well. So of course, I can click on any of these. And notice the wives or husbands are connected via this nice little red link. So Elizabeth and I've got it labeled. They were married in 1483, Elizabeth deceased in 1503. So great for Henry, a nice love of his life, one marriage, and of course, here's Henry VIII. So a little bit of a different story, unlucky in love for Henry VIII. Um, all the wives of Henry VIII are, are linked there over to the left. Um, not only do we have his children down below, we have his, his uh, sort of famous pets, Hank and Sally, linked down below as well, and further information on them. And of course, his siblings are still being displayed on the screen as well, so we can see those. So it becomes really interesting in this area of the brain. This is a pretty massive brain with a lot of information, and it's still growing. Uh, but uh, of course, we can look at the children of Henry, which didn't reign uh, very long. There was Edward, who had no children. Uh, died at a very early age, if I recall. Uh, Mary also was uh, Mary I, Queen of England, who married the King of Spain. And here's Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is interesting because daughter of Henry and, as you can see, Anne Boleyn. Um, and I've got a nice link down below to James the V of Scotland. But James the V of Scotland, as you can see, is not the son of Elizabeth I. He's simply the successor. He was the next in line for the throne. So I kind of want to label that really quickly. I noticed that I've never labeled that before. So he is simply the successor. Maybe I can set that link type up as well. Most of the other thoughts, I believe it's the heir, the, the issue or the child. In this case, he's the successor. He was a distant, very distant cousin of Elizabeth I. 
And so if I go to his thought, you can see the uh, parents up above, Henry, Mary, Queen of Scots. I'm going to click up this path, Queen of Scots, her different uh, husbands over on the left, and uh, James V of Scotland, whose mother was Margaret Tudor, who was the sister of Henry VIII. So they are connected, very, very distant cousin, and he later became the king because there were no other heirs following Henry's uh, bloodline and changed, obviously, the, the course of history for English nobility. And so this brain goes all the way down, obviously, into um, Elizabeth and modern day uh, nobility as well. So here's uh, Elizabeth. I don't have her sister in there, so I see that's an area that I need to improve upon. But you can see that uh, she has four children, Anne, Edward, Andrew, and Charles, and of course, Charles's bloodline on down below to our current or their current uh, Princess George and Princess Charlotte as well. So just a really, really fantastic brain, a great example of using those link types, thought types, and even some tags as well. So you can see that he's tagged, he's the House of Windsor, uh, whereas others are House of, of um, Tudor, et cetera. And uh, the roses will be added in and we'll continue working on this brain. But this particular brain, I want to uh, share with you that this is actually available online and we'll share a link with you just so you can follow our progress and take a look at this, uh, this brain online as well. Um, I did want to show you a little bit more about these zoomable icons. I know uh, Shelly yeah, briefly shared these with you, but I think we're coming me, up Matt? on the hour. Yes, go ahead. Okay, good. No, I just want to say, yes, yeah, stay in this brain for, we do have a lot of questions and we'll get to that. So for those of you that have to, can stay another five, 10 minutes, fabulous. We have this recorded. We'll email the recording, but we're going to get into Q&A. And I, I was just going to say, while you're on this brain, Matt, yes, show zoomable icons too. And Great. maybe the different views. Um, we've stayed in normal view, but we've got some fabulous outline view, distant thought view, um, the new mind mapping Absolutely. view. With this brain, I think it would be fabulous. And maybe just maybe increasing the font. I, I understand we have it small, but maybe showing the, the fonts a little larger too. All of the sure. above viewing options. Sure. There, it's a little bit small looking at this family tree, but uh, I just want to say, I don't know, is it is it... Henry VIII, that's unlucky on, in love, or was it his wife? So, uh, did you maybe we start Googling Anne Bolin and, and see how that one worked out there? Absolutely. I think you've got a, an excellent point. Excellent point. So um, let's go ahead and, and we'll just use the thought for Elizabeth II. And uh, first off, Shelley mentioned scaling the size. Uh, right in the brain, there's a nice handy little sliding tool where depending on how many thoughts you have on the screen and what your screen resolution is, you can really adjust the scale of the font uh, and slide that around to find what works best for you. So we'll adjust the location of the brain by sliding up and down and scale just a bit. And let's go ahead and, and find a more regal picture of Elizabeth. I'm sure there's one out there. So. Uh, we've got a really lovely picture of Queen lovely. Elizabeth there, but let's find something with a little more bling. She's a queen, so let's find something a little more flashy. And I'm going to open up my, there it is. Just and Matt, I don't know if this is also a good time once you show the picture to show off some of the notes features for inserting a video of her or something. I don't know. Oh, it's sure. Kind of, absolutely. Kind of really cool stuff on Queen Elizabeth. Absolutely. So first, let's just look for... Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, there she is. And I'll just jump over to the images. A lot of different ways that you can attach images into the brain. You notice that Shelly and I are using some zoomable yeah. icons. Those are great for people. So obviously uh, here's one of, of uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, in days gone by. I'm just gonna right click and select copy image. And for this particular thought, I'll right click and select to paste this thought icon. So I've overwritten the thought icon with a new zoomable image. Very, very easy to grab an image off the web and uh, drop it right there into the brain. I can also use, Shelly started to show us earlier, I can right click and select to capture an image. So this minimizes the brain and leaves whatever else I had open on the screen. Now, if you do wanna get the, the, uh, the brain back, notice I've got these nice crosshairs I can hit tab to bring the brain back in case I want a brain screenshot. In this case, I want what's behind the brain. I'll hit tab again, the brain is minimized. 
and uh, let's just go with a collage of some different images. So we can see Elizabeth through the years. Nice zoomable icon and uh, very, very easy to grab those images and bring them into the brain um, for the individual thought icon. Now, if you do want to bring images into the notes, let's bring our notes back. So I'll click on the button to bring my notes back. And let's say I just want sort of some younger pictures up above and some more modern day pictures down below. So right in the notes, if I grab something on the clipboard, you can drag and drop into the notes. I personally like to uh, copy the image onto my clipboard. So once again, I'll get one of her uh, younger years. We'll right click and copy the image. I've got it on my clipboard. And that note there, was that already right there? In. Did you just copy that note yes. in real quick? Yeah, no, I, this I, note I, I already had. Okay, you had that yeah. note and we're just adding one more image. Okay, great. Yeah, so you can copy and paste content. You can manually type into the notes. Uh, there's a lot of great features with the notes. Notice I've got a lot of links here out to other web pages. Also, if I find something in here, let's say I want, I'll just type it in from scratch. I saw up above, Richard III. So uh, a very, very, very distant relative of Richard III. But if we're, for some reason, obviously I don't want to see Elizabeth linked all the way back to Richard III, which is back in the 1400s. Uh, so I don't want to see that link in the brain, but maybe in reading the notes, I want to jump over to that Richard the Third thought. I know I've got a Richard the Third thought in my brain, so I type it in here into my notes, and I add a nice little link. So there's a button right here in the notes, insert link to an existing thought. So it's case sensitive. If you know an existing thought name, you can also copy the thought and paste it into the note if you're on that thought in the brain. In this case, I knew it was out there. I type it in. And I have a nice little link. Anytime you see that, that means you can click. And there I go right back to that Richard III thought way, way back in the very start or top of uh, the hierarchy of this particular brain. So another way to link people. It's exactly the, the text of the thought, obviously, right? Exactly. It has to be exactly. Name to the link. Otherwise, you can do a link differently to thoughts, but in that case. Yeah, that's really if you don't want to visualize that relationship or link. You just want to reference it in the notes. So another way to connect thoughts together. So easy to get images there into the plex or, or as the thought icon and very easy to drop those images right here into the notes as well. And now finally, Shelly also mentioned the different views. Once again, I'm going to minimize the notes because I'm really going to focus on the structure um, of the brain. And this is another fantastic way of seeing the big picture of the project you're working on, what are our team members focused on, or if you're working on something of this nature, such as uh, your lineage or, or um, uh, uh, just a people network, let's go into some of our different views. Now, first, let me show you, I can simply click on the plus button to show one additional generation of thoughts. So now I'm seeing two uh, generations of thoughts from the current active thought. In this case, not only do I see Elizabeth, but I also see Charles child thought down below and his child thought. So there's Prince William and there's Prince Harry also appearing in the brain. So a more expanded view. And you can play around with how these are actually displayed by going into your preferences. And you can see that uh, thought spacing can be adjusted a little bit. And again, really depends on how much screen real estate you have. Shelly and I are broadcasting on a very, very low real, uh, uh, screen real estate, a very low resolution today. Uh, so that there's no, hopefully, lag time in what we're demoing. Uh, but with a larger screen, larger monitor, you can really expand these different views to see the big picture of your information. And let's go ahead and do that now. Let's switch from normal view to outline view. So in outline view, notice I can hover over a thought. So if I hover over a thought whose child thoughts are displayed, I can actually minimize those thoughts. Uh, let's navigate on up to George and Edward. And once again, I can come back and say, well, I do want to see Charles. So I'll expand Charles, uh, but I'll minimize up here. Whatever the case may be, I can really click around and, and play with how I want my thoughts to be displayed. This is another great example. Uh, if I want to go back in time to when things got a little bit messy, back with Henry and and Victoria and Margaret, et cetera. 
So um, again, another way of seeing the big picture, I can use the sliding tool. If I've got too much on the screen at one time, I can use that sliding tool to adjust. And if I really just want to minimize some content, there you can see in a big screen how this really starts coming together. Um, I can once again start just clicking on that collapse button. It doesn't delete the content, it just removes it from the current view when you click on that little minus sign. And again, the plus then just brings it right back. And then finally, with Henry as my current active thought, I'll switch into mind map view. And mind map view really allows me to once again get the big picture of my information. Uh, here I'll make Henry the eighth my active thought. So I right click and select to make that my active thought. And down below, I can start expanding on these particular thoughts by mousing over and viewing all of their content. So a lot that you can do with the different views in the brain. Uh, typically, the default view is the normal view. You can see things in this particular brain. I've got a lot going on. So it works very well on a larger monitor. But uh, if you're thinking, oh, gosh, this isn't helping me, it's really just because of my low, low resolution. But obviously, adjusting on a large monitor would help me to visualize this content a lot better. But just want to make you sure that you're aware that those views are there and available to you. Very nice. All right. And I think with that, um, we will go ahead and move into Q&A. Great. OK, excellent. Um, well, a couple different questions. Um, earlier on, there were some questions about importing um, from the brain eight to the brain nine. So we can cover that. And then another uh, interesting question that someone had beyond that is, um, can I just copy and paste thoughts from brain eight to brain nine or a section okay. of the brain? And you can't do that um, yet. So if you do just want a section, a workaround for that, I, I wrote in the Q&A, but it's worth bringing up is take that section of thoughts, copy it into a new brain for import, and then go to the import option. Merge it right import, into right the now, brain, the yeah. way importing works is Brain9 is a completely different, it's amazing back end database. So you can import brains, but copying, pasting between uh, two versions is, is not something um, that uh, is going to be possible. So I'll let Matt go into a little bit of the details on importing. Since sure. That came up. So it's important to point out a couple of things. If you've got version 8, you can install version 9, and it will not overwrite version 8. Um, Shelly showed you earlier she has 8 and 9 running, and that's the default scenario. So um, you can see I've got 8 and 9 running as well. Here's my personal, personal brain uh, showing up in version 8, and here's a version, the application uh, 9 running. So both can be running. And when you import a version 8 brain into 9, you still have your copy of version 8. So I've gotten a lot of different feedback from different users. They're importing their brain into 9 just to kick the tires and play around with technology a little bit, but still utilizing version 8, their version 8 copy. Um, then once they're ready and they see all the fantastic new features of version 9, uh, and that it's faster and, and so stable, that they simply delete that brain, re-import with all the latest changes from eight into nine. And in nine, you can see I click on file and select import. And there by default, it's, it's assuming you're probably going to import a version nine brain. There it is at the top. So I click select file and navigate. And let's see if I have a brain that I have not imported yet. I think I have imported all of uh, all of my brains. Maybe I don't have my W. Shakespeare brain. And you know what? That's also fine too, because it's very simple. You just follow the steps as long as people can see. You know, there you go. right follow there, the import, and you, and you put import. it in. So. And that brain did import very quickly. So that's my Shakespeare brain imported right oh, nice. into version nine, and I can go on from there. Lots of interesting people in that brain as well. There is, yes, characters, non-existent okay. people. Great. And then uh, Mark had a question that uh, always liked the function of producing multiple thoughts at once for populating huge nameless. Uh, there's still a lot of manual work involved for additional info on the person. Are there any more tricks to automate bulk tasks? So ah. um, I think as far as tricks, you know, once you've got the person, then you pretty much do have to drag and drop, say, a LinkedIn profile or a document manually. But that being said, we do have some great importing options for importing for full folders, full mind maps, through spreadsheets, um, through XML maps. I don't know. We can't 
cover all of these, but if you just want right, to shine right. a light on all of our bulk importing features, that, that might be sure. something interesting. So I clicked on File Import, and notice that I can import something as a new brain or add into um, this particular brain. Add to Tudor Dynasty, add a link below Henry, that's my current active thought, another brain. So I can import into an open brain or into a brand new brain. I want to point that out. Um, also, here's the other different features. You can import a whole folder if you're just getting started with the brain, uh, or you've got another application, mind mapping application that you know has a limit to the number of, of nodes, or we call them thoughts that you can have. You wanna carry that on to have unlimited number of thoughts, you can import a mind map uh, file right into the brain. So some great import features are still there, but also you specifically mentioned I think you were probably, Mark, referencing the semicolon trick, and there are a couple of new features that I really like. Um, and let's just use Henry as an example. So let's say Henry has, uh, research discovers that Henry has a, um, had another pet, maybe it was a pet bird named Roger. So I'm gonna type in Roger, and I specifically want to specify that Roger was a bird. So I'm using the pipe symbol, and I say bird, but wait, there's more. He had another pet, Phil, and Phil was, we'll just say a mouse. So I'm using the semicolon and the pipe symbol uh, to create these oops, two thoughts. The pipe is actually going to, and as I'm going, notice that I can add types and tags there as well. There's no keyboard shortcut for those. You manually just use the drop-down menu. But when I mouse over Roger, Roger was a bird. When I mouse over Phil, you can see Phil was a mouse. Um, so that pipe symbol is a nice way to add the label as you go. And this is also a fantastic tool. If you know the, co uh, the comma trick within the brain, context-sensitive naming, the brain has gotten very smart about your context-sensitive naming. So let's say Roger uh, had a couple of, um, uh, Roger was the bird and Roger had a couple of sons named, uh, we'll say, Larry, Jerry, and Barry. But we won't just say that, we'll add the comma trick. So I'm adding a comma before each thought. You can use all of these in conjunction, comma, the pipe symbol, the semicolon can all be used at once. So even I'll say Barry the bird. So pipe symbol, bird. So notice I'm using semicolons and commas. And so I'll hit enter. And there you can see the comma trick is now in play. The comma trick, we didn't talk about this today, but we do talk about this in, uh, in other webinars. The comma actually appends the parent name to the child thought name. This is really great in business. If you are keeping track of all of your meeting notes, but all of your customers have meeting notes. You don't want dozens of thoughts called meeting notes. You want company A meeting notes, company B meeting notes. So the comma trick will append the thought name. So there's Roger's son Larry, Roger's son Barry, and Roger's son Jerry. But let's say historians do a little more research. His name wasn't Roger, his name was Bill. So I'm going to change Roger to Bill the bird. And watch what happens when I hit enter. The brain notices, wait a minute, you're using Roger with the context sensitive naming, the comma trick, on three other thoughts. Do you wanna change those? Absolutely I do. So I'll go ahead and select rename and my child thoughts are now Bill the bird had buried the bird, Jerry had buried the bird, etc. So a uh, fantastic way to add um, that context sensitive naming, great enhancements there, the pipe feature as well for adding new thoughts. A couple of sort of hidden little features, but if you utilize those a lot, you're really gonna like it. All right, great. And uh, I think, um, you know, we're kind of on the, uh, the the edge of our, our webinar here. So I wanna thank everyone uh, for joining us. And I also wanna let you know, really we were focused on you know all these people network brains, which they tend to be very intense, like the tutor brain or even the one world social networking list, lots of connections. So if any of you new users are on the call and feeling like, whoa, this is too much, join Matt's class, the 101 this Friday. Oops, I, I fisted my table and moved my webcam. So that's just a great class. I'm very passionate about that class. So, and you can come in and even for you, for those of you that are transitioning right now to the brain nine, you might just have two or three questions 
hop in at the end. We don't mind. Come in late and, and ask Matt, Matt questions and leave. And then there were a, a couple questions at the end I want to reference from John and then I think uh, Jose about bulk imports and imports from database. And, uh, you know, obviously LinkedIn contacts would be great to do a bulk import, something we have on our radar screen as a, a feature list. I know it's something I'd be looking forward to. So stay tuned for that kind of development. Don't have it yet. John also asked an interesting question about, you know, connecting to databases if you did something like a mail merge. And that, that kind of thing, we're going to be putting out an API at some point. Uh, maybe next year. I can't really give any official dates. So that kind of stuff might be possible through uh, new APIs coming out. And then, of course, we have server software that does let you connect dynamically to databases. So um, some of these more advanced features and questions that have come in right on the uh, the end of the hour here, um, is, some of them might may be possible, but a lot of them will be future development. But always happy to discuss very specific projects. So if you have a specific business requirement to do X, uh, you know, talk to us. Um, we can help you out. We offer free support to all users. We also have a professional services team and we have, we're focusing on the desktop software today, but we have obviously a server technology as well for those of you that need to deploy. And that brings me to one final question that I, 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 I said I'd ask. It was about installing a brain on a network drive, let me just, I'm just scrolling through the Q&A about an NAS, and we were kind of going back and forth about what that acronym was. I'm just looking for the question. Oh, here it is from Mark. So let's get that one in. Um, it, he, he wants to install, again, this is a little bit, uh, maybe this is a, an offline question, but we're on the end of the hour, so we'll go ahead and get this one in. I, he, Mark sure. wants to install the Brain 9 on, uh, uh, I want to install the Brain 9 on client, but I want to store my brains on a network accessible drive. Is, is this a good idea? Uh, so install in, with the Brain 9, we do recommend that you install the Brain locally. Now let me share a few things with you. Let me go up to Options, and I'm going to go into Preferences. If you're on a Mac, you would click on the Brain and then Preferences. And here on the System tab, this question came up earlier as well as far as localization. So you notice we can change uh, languages of uh, interface language and spelling language. So those are options for you. But also here is your storage location. So this is where you're storing all those internal attachments uh, for your brain data. And we do recommend, you can just read through the description here, um, uh, do not set, uh, set, this local, set this location to a network share. Uh, could lead to per drastic performance problems and possibly data corruption as well. Uh, okay. So be, a, be aware sure. of that. So we do yeah, recommend so to keep it local. Keep it local, and we can talk about file sync. We're actually on the end of our hour here, so we gotta, we're going to plow through and thank you all for the call. And Matt, any final words of wisdom before, we, uh, before GoToMeeting shuts off on us here? <laughs> Just want to thank everyone for joining us. It's a really fun topic for us to share with you today. Please do, again, if you're just getting started with the brain and want to see more about the brain nine, or maybe you're, you're totally familiar with the brain eight, now it's time to take a closer look at the brain nine. Join me for a brain 101 held every Friday. We're happy to share that with you. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. And remember, um, your brain isn't complete with at least a few people. So go ahead, and in addition to your, your files and your data and your projects, make sure you have some people in your brain. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.